Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. And if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in buying the 2021 Volkswagen Atlas. Good thing for you, we've got it right here. Refreshed face, V6 engine, front wheel drive, interestingly, since I'm sure a lot of you would be interested in all wheel drive for your three row crossover. We're gonna take a look around the truck, gonna take it out for a test drive, talk about its pros, its cons, and whether your money should be going toward it. So let's start here in the back. For 2021, Volkswagen's largest vehicle, a little refreshed, looking good back here, some chrome accents, nice silver paint. The Atlas excels in this class by being functional. Very large, but still not quite as cumbersome as a full body end frame SUV, like maybe an Expedition or a Tahoe or something like that. You can see Volkswagen provides these nifty little organizers so you can kind of make little boxes and put things in here. They Velcro on really strong. We've got that LOL left there for Chris up at the Topher when he gets this car. Underneath, got a little bit of storage. It's definitely nice. This floor comes out. You got storage compartments on the side. You got hooks on the side. It's a great car for camping or if you do a lot of kind of cargo hauling, that sort of deal because you fold down the third row really easily. And look at this super flat load floor. Virtually no seam there. Just goes nice back really easy. And with these little handles and a little bit of spring action, it's very easy to pull these seats back up. There's not a lot of resistance. Very easy for anyone of any height and strength to manage. Then if you crawl way back here, pull these levers as well and fold down the middle row. Look at that. You have an entirely flat load surface all the way up to the first row. If you wanted to use this car for say, camping or sleeping back here or something all of this space look at this i'm five foot ten i can lay down i got a nice view out of the panoramic sunroof it's comfortable it's flat this is honestly really really good usable space and i'm impressed with volkswagen's utilization here let's hop on back out put this back here Power closed lift gate. Works very nicely, very quiet too. Getting into the second row. Let's bring this seat back up. This is how you move the second row out of the way. Very nicely and easily folds and slides forward. Really good execution there. Again, impressed by Volkswagen. That chair goes up. This one comes up. Let's bring this up as well. This one back. Holding city. And then sitting back here, I don't think I'm able to actually move this seat back, but I can slide over this. So even with the second row put all the way back at five foot 10, I'm a little tight on space, but headroom is fine. I could sit back here for a few hours. Probably wouldn't want to do a long road, long road trip as an adult, but for kids, it should be perfectly fine. You've got cup holders, little storage compartments, no power points back here, except for some 12 volt outlets. No USB, so that's a bit disappointing, but not the end of the world. And obviously you can have these second row seats up a little bit and then give myself plenty of knee room. No problem there. Coming up into the second row, let's slide that back. With the second row seats all the way back, tons of room back here. Not only that, I can recline. Really a lot of reclinability here. Plenty of space for kids adults or even rear facing car seats so it might not be quite as good as a minivan but definitely close You've got these really easy to use sunshades as well probably one of the best executions of that some of these are really hard to put up and latch in but here in the atlas it works quite well you also have third climate zone back here so fan control temperature you don't have any vents on the ceiling so that's important to remember if you have a baby in the car seat there's no way to channel air down onto them or anything like that. But you got vents right here, you can sort of pipe that up. You got two USB-A ports and a 115 wall style outlet down there that's grounded. So that's pretty cool to see. And even if you have to slide the seat forward a little to give a little bit of extra space to the third row, look at this, I still got tons of space slid up. So no issues there. So far, definitely some wins with the Atlas. It's looking good here in R-Line trim, nice 21 inch wheels, 
The ride is actually surprisingly good for only having relatively narrow tires. Up into the front seat, you can see it's a handsome cabin. Good surfaces, nice materials. Pretty good build quality feel. Solid doors. Push button start. This V6 engine comes to life. There's also a two liter turbo option. Really nice screens here in the Atlas. This center touchscreen actually works remarkably well. Very quick to respond. If you wanna see more on this, I actually did a dedicated sound system and infotainment review showing Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and doing a demonstration of the audio system. Check the link in the description for that. We also did a real world highway fuel economy test of this Atlas. So took it out, averaged 70 miles per hour over 100 miles to see what you can actually get on the highway in terms of fuel economy. This nice big center screen, you can actually put those gauges away and get a really big map layout. The frustrating thing is though, when you have the map up here, you can't bring it up on the center screen. You actually have to switch, then the map comes up here and goes away for there. So kind of weird that they didn't allow it on both. I know some vehicles I like to have over here just kind of like a standard north facing up 2D map display. And then on the gauge cluster, I would have sort of a 3D following the car setup, but it is what it is. Heated seats here in the SEL model, but no cooled seats. The other thing you don't have is a 360 degree camera. Would be nice to see that. You're seeing a lot of newer SUVs. You might be able to get that on a higher up trim, but not found here in the SEL. And you're still looking about 45 grand for this SEL model. So not exactly cheap, especially considering you're not getting all the bells and whistles and you're also not getting all wheel drive. I do appreciate that there's a heated steering wheel with three different heat settings. So you can have three, two, one, and off. That's something you don't often see for heated steering wheels. Overall, driver comfort is decent. I spent many hours behind the seat over the past week, and I did notice my butt getting a little bit uncomfortable over after about maybe an hour and a half, two hours in the saddle. So not the most comfortable in this class, but not too bad. Ergonomics are pretty decent. This is a good place to rest elbows, and the steering wheel is a nice layout. The most frustrating thing with the Atlas is the throttle tip-in. The gas pedal is very, very aggressive. So if you just kind of breathe on the gas a little bit, the car sort of jolts away and takes off. Something that really requires a lot of finesse. Even right there, I'm probably only on the gas, maybe 10%, and it's just yanking itself away. It feels as though some cars do in sport mode, but this car doesn't have any drive modes. I mean, it does have a D and an S, so technically it has a sport mode but it's not like a dedicated shift a knob and, and see the drive mode come up sort of thing. Another annoyance of the Atlas, there's a bad squeak, squeaky rattle in the back. It's something related to the second row seats and I cannot eliminate it. I've tried adjusting the seats in all sorts of different ways. I've looked around for anything loose. Volkswagens are notorious for rattles and it's frustrating that this one follows that trend. Along with the touchy gas pedal, the steering is also remarkably light and not really in a good way. This vehicle is definitely large, it's, it's boxy, it feels like something that should be kind of sat up and authoritarian-like, but the steering here at 55 miles per hour is very light and vague. It's nice for when you're in parking lots or doing slow speed driving, but up at highway speeds or speeds like this, you want a sense of confidence from behind the wheel and the Atlas does not do a great job at providing that. Maybe some people would prefer that light steering all around, but I generally do like lighter steering and this is just a little too vague for me. I'm not expecting it to be a race car, but you want a sense of confidence. Volkswagen has improved their transmission tuning. The original Volkswagen Atlas with the V6 upshifted way too soon. It felt very gutless, but I think they kind of overcorrected and said, oh, people want it to feel more powerful. All right, well, we'll just give the gas a We'll just provide a bunch of throttle input with a little bit at the beginning and make it feel fast, and they might have overdone it. Let's do a zero to 60 start. Do a 60 to zero break.
Somehow, I think it kicked a rock up on the back. But other than that, nothing too eventful. Even with the V6 motor, it's not exactly a rocket ship, but it's competent. I'd be interested to try the 2-liter turbo. It might be enough. If you're looking for a driver's three-row crossover, this certainly is not it. The CX-9 from Mazda definitely feels a little more light on its feet. Even the Honda Pilot, a little bit happier to rev out. Atlas has no problem getting up to highway speeds. You do have adaptive cruise control in this 2021 model. Now for the 2021 and a half models, there's actually a mid, mid model year refresh that adds a semi-autonomous driving mode that's able to steer itself and fully stop and go all the way to from zero to 90 miles per hour all on its own. And also includes an updated infotainment system with USB-C support and a few other features. This doesn't have that, but the adaptive cruise control still works remarkably well. There is an active lane keep feature. It doesn't work the best, but it does kind of help coax you just gently back into your lane. It won't hold the lane in a corner like this, but it's sort of just a, a little helper reminder. As for other active safety features, you've got blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert. If you're backing out and there's a car coming, it'll tell you. And then frontal assist, so if, if you're come, about to hit something from the front, it'll beep at you and apply the brakes. Like I said, the ride, remarkably good in the Atlas. Takes these bumps really nicely. Interior storage up front is pretty decent. This center storage well is huge. You can fit all sorts of goodies in there, but I do kind of wish it had maybe some smaller compartments up top, a little tray or something like that, so that not everything needs to hang out in there. You've got a really large wireless device charger, so that's cool to see. It can fit even the larger Galaxy Note or iPhone Pro Maxes in there. Multiple USB ports are on. I think you've got five in the vehicle, as this one spec. You've got a CD player, SD card slots in the glove box. Overall, there's a good bit to like about the Atlas. It's a lot of practical space, good at the people hauling aspects. It's just a little bit of a letdown from the driver's seat. For me, the Atlas would be about a seven and a half out of 10 objective rating here in 2021. I really like the looks updated. I think they look really good, but I would be picking a Kia Telluride over this, a Hyundai Palisade, I would take this over the Subaru Ascent and the Ford Explorer. It's pretty on par with the Ford Explorer. Some people would prefer that, some people prefer this, and I'd say either one of those would be fine. Honda Pilot, I would take a Pilot over this. Toyota Highlander, that one would be tough. I would take the Highlander, but just barely. If you like the looks of this better and kind of the simplicity of it, it's not gonna be quite as reliable as the Toyota Highlander, but you could go with it. The Highlander will also probably get better fuel economy. So there you have it, the 2021 Volkswagen Atlas. Let us know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to know about the car, anything you'd like to see on future reviews. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the review and check out our other content, both on this Atlas and all the other three rows and different vehicles that we've got. I do think this is definitely one of the sharpest in this category. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.